You have used and learned about two try methods now, try and try parse. Even though they are only two methods, there is a lot to learn and understand with them. So let's test your knowledge on this now and solidify what you have understood. Let's jump in with our first question. What does parsing do? Does it convert strings to numbers, convert numbers to strings, or convert string to various other types? So this is the point and purpose of parsing in C Sharp. Which does it do? And the answer is it converts strings to various types. So it doesn't have to just convert strings to numbers and it certainly does not convert numbers to strings. Converting numbers to strings is the opposite way and it's using the two string method. Hopefully you all got this one right as this was a nice simple starter. What input types do parse methods support? Is it any types? Is it strings? Or is it depends on the type it's parsing to? So this is the types of value that the parse method can accept when we call dot parse. And the answer is strings. The parse method is specific in which it only converts strings to other types. The whole purpose of parse is to take a string representation of something and convert it to many other types. So it doesn't accept any type it can convert to almost any type based on if there is a parse method available, but it only ever accepts a string. You always parse a string to something else. It's never a number being parsed. We are parsing a string to possibly convert it to a number, but we always convert the type string using the parse method. Next, what is the difference between parse and try parse? Is it that parse throws an exception if failed? Try parse returns false if failed? Or both calls are the same? So think about this one, we have covered all these topics and you should get this right. And the answer is both A and B. Parse throws an exception when it fails and try parse returns false when it fails. But they are certainly not the same. They both have completely different code and the way they handle the code is different. And try parse is more efficient than parse because it doesn't have to throw an exception, which is a costly expense that can slow down your program. Hopefully you're all doing okay on this test now and we're getting at least 50 to 80% right. Let's move on. What is the result of int.parse and the string 1.0? Is it one? Or is an exception thrown? Or is it false? So what is the return value of int.parse with this value? You should get this because we've covered all these things in the previous lessons. And the answer is an exception is thrown. As we just mentioned, the parse call throws an exception if the input value is not valid. The input type is correct, it is a string, and it is a number. It's 1.0, however, that is a floating point number, not an integer. So int.parse can't convert 1.0 to a whole number. Even though it is the number one, it's represented as a floating point number, so this will throw an exception. And one for those that pay close attention again. What type of exception can parse throw? Is it a number exception? a format exception, or a formatting exception. So if we just entered the code in the previous question, what exception would have been thrown? And the answer is a format exception. A number exception does not exist, nor does a formatting exception, but the parse method can throw a format exception. It can also throw two other exceptions, and the way to find that out, and something you should do out of curiosity when calling methods, is once the method has been called and you have passed all the parameters, hover your cursor over the name of the method, in this case, parse, and a well-documented method, such as the ones written by Microsoft, 
will tell you with IntelliSense the exceptions that can be thrown and in what circumstance. For example, int.parse can throw a null reference exception if we pass null. It can throw a format exception if we pass an invalid formatted string and it can throw one other exception. I will leave that up to you to go and find out. It's good information to know because when calling methods, when we get into exceptions and crashing, it's very important to know whether the method you are calling is expected to crash and if we should try and catch around that method. Second to last question now. Where is the result of a successful try parse stored? Is the value returned from the method? Is a new variable created and returned? Or is a local variable passed into the method and directly modified? So when try parse succeeds, where do we get that value from? And the answer is a local variable that is passed in. As we have seen and as we have done, we have to create a local variable and then pass it into the method using the special keyword out to allow the method to edit that instance of our variable. The parse method returns the value. The try parse method returns a Boolean if it was successful, but the actual value is stored in the variable that we passed in. And last question now, let's see if any of you get this one right. What is the value of A in this expression? So this expression is correct. It is valid code. Do we get null as the value of A? Datetime offset dot minval, or is an exception thrown? Now some may guess this out of luck, others may know this, but most probably won't. The answer is datetime offset dot minval. The way you will know this is if you paid attention when you were writing the code, when we were putting in the out variable, the IntelliSense that comes up and tells you about the information you are writing explicitly states that when it is not successful, the variable passed in is set to datetime offset dot minval. So that's how you would know that piece of information, or you might have tried it. But the information is still important to know because this will come in useful in future. So this was a nice short test on parsing, but hopefully you got most of them right. I expect you got some wrong. But as always, go back and retake the lessons until you score 100% on the tests.